Hello, my name is Josep Bosch. I am Information Officer at the WTO and I would like to welcome you to this debate that coincides with the symposium to celebrate the 15th anniversary of the Information Technology Agreement, what we call the ITA. The ITA provides for participants to completely eliminate duties on certain information technology products to encourage trade in this important and growing sector of the industry. There are currently 74 participants out of the WTO 155 members. It represents 97% of world trade in inf information technology products. And that includes computers, semiconductors and related equipment, telecommunication gadgets, data storage, media and software, and other parts and accessories. And here with me to discuss the agreement, I have Mr. Paul Kukubo. He's the Chief Executive Officer of the Kenya Information and Communication Technology Board. Welcome, Mr. Kukubo. Thank you. And we also have Mr. Ulf Persson, Vice President, Government and Industry Relations of Ericsson a well-known company in this field. Mr. Person is also a member of the Trade Commission of the International Chamber of Commerce. Welcome, Mr. Person. Thank you. I would like first of, for you to make a balance of 15 years of the ITA, its importance, its achievements, and maybe its shortcomings, if any. How important has the ITA been for innovation and for development? We start with Mr. Person. Please. Thank you. Well, as, as the world's leading provider of telecoms infrastructure, uh, we have seen, of course, a tremendous uh, uh, development during these 15 years. Uh, when the ITA was, was launched, there were only some 100 million mobile subscriptions in the world. 100 million. There was no country which had a penetration of more than 30%. I think Norway was leading the field with 29. 15 years later, we can see that we have more than 6 billion mobile subscriptions in the world and basically only around 10 countries that have not yet reached 30% penetration. Global penetration is reaching 90% soon. So I think that the ITA has played a major part as an enabler uh, for this fantastic development. Of course, technology has played its part as well, but I think the ITA, we wouldn't have been where we are today without the ITA. But of course, there, there are some challenges. Uh, we'll probably come back to those. But, uh, and I see also that, as you mentioned, uh, less than half of, of WTO's uh, members are actually members of the ITA. So I think there is, is uh, 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 room for, for expansion there. And also, of course, when it comes to the products covered under the agreement. Mr. Kukubo, how do you see these past 15 years? Has it been a success? What are the achievements from your point of view of this agreement? Our board didn't exist until about four years ago. And so when the ITA uh, was originally mooted, I think the country was at a level of sophistication, which meant that it couldn't be a substantive agenda item at the time. You can imagine we were not a major producer of IT products. We were not a major consumer of IT products. Uh, uh, in, the, in the early days of the ITA. Um, I think there's been huge change. Um, uh, we're now looking at um, becoming more um, service-oriented, more export-oriented with ICT products, and so technology is going to be an important part of our national agenda. And to that end, I think this ITA um, is going to be a very important part uh, of our strategy going forward. Um, in fact, one of the big issues for us is when I see the growth that um, ITA has facilitated in the past 15 years from the statistics, uh, um, this would be something that we look at very favorably. Of course, we have all mobile phones. Uh, we use it like without thinking about them, but I suppose that we have other ways to illustrate the importance of, of uh, products related to information technology agreement. Would you like to mention any particular um, product that you think has also important 
importance in the everyday life of people. Yeah, but first I think we should remember that a phone today is not what it was some years back. In the old days we, we used phones just to, for voice calls. Uh, today with a smartphone, a word that we didn't even know some five years back, uh, is, is uh, taking over the world. Uh, smartphone users are really driving developments and smartphones are coming down in price, uh, uh, enabling people to connect to the internet via the smartphone. So, so we expect growth of, of, of uh, internet users to travel in the next five years or so, uh, thanks to the smartphone and mobile broadband. But I think also, if you look at the ICT industry, uh, uh, I think the uh, dividing line between products that are part of the agreement today, which was negotiated 15 years ago uh, in a completely different technology era, uh, and, and today is that uh, it's, it's quite uh, uh, an artificial uh, uh, dividing line. I think that man, many products uh, like, like TV sets or cameras or, or GPS receivers, which were not really in the market there, uh, needs to be part of a broader agreement because you can't draw this artificial dividing line between some ICT products should be part of the agreement and some not. And also, who knows, we need to open up for innovation moving forward. Uh, who knows which products will come out uh, uh, a few years down the road even. I mean, there's a very fast development here. So we need to ensure that basically all ICT products are part of the new and expanded agreement. And for you representing in this case a developing country, would you agree with Mr. Person? Uh, what, uh, can you give us some examples about how important it is for, you, for, your, for the citizens of Kenya to have access to these new technologies? Yeah, um, first of all, I agree with certain aspects of uh, your suggestion, actually. Um, if you look at the definitions of what an ICT product is today, or what it was 15 years ago, what it will be in five years, I think the challenge becomes one of, can you even define products uh, properly anymore? Can you classify products properly? Is a, is a phone a camera? Is a camera a bank? Uh, is a bank a mobile phone? I mean, I'll give you an example of what I mean. Um, in Kenya, one of the successes is uh, mobile money. Uh, it's a huge success. Uh, 18 million people out of a population of 40 million people can transfer funds on a mobile phone. A lot of money goes through mobile phone uh, compared to uh, the banking system. The mobile phone companies are asking for more uh, leeway with respect to products. They want to start loaning products on the basis of how much money you carry on a prepaid SIM card. Now, you can imagine what that does from a policy perspective. In fact, for us, one of the reasons why I think we Kenya has been very successful is that regulation has been minimized more than more than minimized in the sense that you want to allow innovation to flourish. And because these things are serving unusual needs, uh, if you look at Kenya now, one of the new things now that is going on is the use of farmers, farmers using mobile phones for product predictions and for Su supporting supply chain. Now the phone, t the phone as a device takes on a new, a new, new, new use, and I don't know what peripherals people invent to add to that phone, and whether they will be part of the WTO mm -hmm. agreement. So these issues are very delicate, and I think uh, one can say that the the need to have global agreements is important. I think as a general principle, because it helps us when we have successful products, to be able to find new markets for those products. We want to be bound by some, some global rules. Uh, but again, um, the fear always is that, um, especially in the WTO agreement, other WTO agreements, has always been the fact that, I think India made a case today about the fact that a lot of IT convergence, a lot of IT convergence around large companies is beginning to be seen. Um, and therefore that brings creates a new type of barrier, uh, the barrier of global monopoly. Um, and we that's going to be a worry. For example, that if you look at our IT uh, sector today, it could end up being dominated purely by companies that are based abroad because they get such large economies of scale and scope that it's actually useless to try and create local capacity in that respect. And that's, that's a danger. 
I would like you now to look into the future. Um, I don't want you to spill any industrial secrets, mm. but what is the research department of Ericsson, for instance, looking, uh, looking to now? I mean, what products are we going to have in, in the future? What can we expect from mm. all these invention, innovation, that it's constant and proper to this industry? Yeah, but I think what we see in the years to come is uh, that we will have not only maybe 8 billion mobile subscriptions, but there will be 50 billion connected devices. Everything benefiting from a connection will be connected. And this, of course, will open up tremendous possibilities when it comes to productivity, innovation, etc. We're really moving into what we call the networked society. And I think that we all stand to benefit. And I think that Paul's examples from Kenya are extremely interesting because we don't really see that innovation is the uh, monopoly of, of the very advanced markets. Some of the most uh, 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 forward-looking innovations in this industry has come from emerging markets like Kenya when it comes to mobile payments, for example. And just coming back to the, the question of monopolies, I think that tele the telecom sector, of course, has be been very successful in really reaching out uh, to uh, the very poor. Uh, uh, it's a technology that has enabled people in, in remote villages, in, in, in take your country, Kenya, to be connected and, and to be uh, a part of, 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 of uh, the global society in a way through communications. Uh, and I think that here the economies of scale, open standards, etc. has proven uh, uh, the value. But I think that uh, it's, uh, we don't have the answers. No company or no government I think has the answers. But I think that uh, an expanded ITA can really help bringing about this network society with which will bring tremendous benefits uh, to, to all of society in many sectors. Mr. Kukubo, how do you see the future? Are we going to get this expanding coverage? Are we going to see more members as part of the agreement? How do you see this agreement uh, evolution in the, in the future? I think that's what, uh, what you speak about earlier is very important. Um, for, for companies, for countries to be able to to participate more meaningfully, they must become um, part of the global value chain in some shape or form. And to become part of that global value chain, you have to understand how that value chain works. And many developing countries are not really part of that value chain in the sense that they are net recipients of R&D and net recipients of product. So they are net importers and net importance of technology and R&D, and that cannot continue to happen. Uh, to that end, one of the things we are concerned with in, in Kenya is being, being uh, very R&D based and de developing a good R&D resource so that Ericsson, for example, and companies like that set up emerging technology research centers in, in places like Kenya. Our innovation style is based on a couple of realities. One, one reality is that sometimes we are constrained with respect to certain types of infrastructure. In many parts of the world, uh, in Africa especially, maybe not so much Kenya, banking doesn't reach many people. Mm. Uh, services don't reach many people. For example, most Kenyans will get their first internet experience on a mobile phone. It's a different type of reality. And when you're designing a network, like say LTE and whatever it is, you have to look at mm. those realities and it gives you a new reality. And if we can participate by providing the social context, but also the geographical place for that to happen, then countries like ours can become more meaningful um, producers of technology. And when you become more meaningful producers of technology, then we look at WTO and IT agreements a lot more favorably. And finally, as a conclusion, w what do you think should be the message that would come out of this symposium? I think it's very important to recognize the tremendous strong, tremendously strong link between uh, uh, connectivity, uh, broadband connectivity and growth when it comes to the economy or growth in jobs. That has been shown and I think that that can serve as a, a, a stimulant to, to those governments that have not yet decided to take the step to join the ITA because even if you have a very open trade regime the uh, uh, predictability that comes with entering a WTO agreement, 
the predictability for, for industry players that you have a zero uh, uh, tariff regime, I think it is extremely important and cannot be, be overestimated. But also, of course, uh, 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 for those uh, that are already in the uh, agreement, uh, to look at it, an expansion, of course, when it comes to products. But I think that what's important to, to remember about ITA, it's a standalone agreement. Members, member states have joined because they are convinced that opening up trade and, and IT and telecoms product is really good for society. And I think we heard uh, many examples here, and especially for, for emerging markets, this provides an opportunity with, if you don't tax these products at the border, you can stimulate the development of, of innovation, uh, developing of a services industry uh, based on, 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 on accessible uh, uh, prices for, for technology, but also software development, etc. I think the large part of the value chain in this industry is not probably in manufacturing, it's in software, it's in services, it's in application building on, 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 on the hardware. Would you agree with that? Uh, what is the, the lesson that you are going to take home or the conclusion you're going to take home after this symposium? I think we, yes, I agree with, with that. I think the emerging economies have to leapfrog. Um, first of all, have to contribute meaningfully mm -hmm. to the global value chain and the value networks, the global production networks, and have to leapfrog. They can't build their technology reality around the sequence that developed countries did. So it means that the software and services side of the business has to be where a lot of the attention is, 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 is made. And some of those software and services areas may or may not be subject